What is going on, Ron Sawyer? Today here with Thundershot. What's up? And uh, we're gonna bring you some more Dragon Ball Xenoverse uh, content, specifically based around uh, uh, Sergio's discovery of more uh, hacked data, basically. Uh, specifically around attacks and possible characters. Just to catch some of you up who don't know, Sergio is a guy who, when the beta came out, he hacked into it and he found a bunch of this stuff. We are not confirming anything, nothing is for sure in the game, but he found a bunch of stuff in the actual game's code uh, that puts certain characters such as Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, people from GT, people from the original Dragon Ball, people from the new movie, we're talking Beerus, Goku, a bunch of their attacks he found in the game. Uh, and that's what we're going off of. I'm sure the link to that will be in the description of the video down below. So, and the main reason why we decided to do this video together is just because we wanted to do some theory stuff just to get you guys to talk and to see what you as a community, not you, what we as a community want because we're all, you know, here together for the same thing, which is Dragon Ball Z. There we go. So, so the first thing we'll kick it off with is actually uh, something that's kind of interesting that I, that I haven't seen many people talk about is accessories and forms of weapons. Because uh, a lot of people ask is, I wonder if we can use Trunks' uh, sword for my character. And the thing that kind of raised my eyebrows today was when they revealed the super attacks in uh, the most recent data uh, discovery was uh, Kid Goku's attacks. Specifically yeah. around a uh, power pole. So what do you think about the possibility of being able to actually equip uh, weapons for well, your characters? I mean, yeah, first of all, he did discover it. Power pole combo was in there along with an actual attacker thing called power pole. My question is, I'm wondering if it's going to be something that replaces a super slot, or is it going to be one of those things that replaces your melee? Is the power pole going to be every single melee attack you have for the most part? Or is it going to be like a super move, kind of like an innocence rush thing that we've seen before, except done with a power pole where you just do a bunch of moves one at a time like that? I'm really wondering uh, if they bring accessories as a whole, or even just the power pole into it, what slot exactly that would fit into. My theory, and this is again, this we want you guys to talk as well. So post your theories below in the comments as well. But my theory is, is I feel like it's just going to re replace your melee or key. And the reason I say key as well is because uh, uh, Jacko, the, the Galactic Patrolman, is also in the game, and he fights with a ray gun. And uh, one of the attacks, what was it? One of the attacks that you saw on the list? Oh, I have to pull it back up. I believe it's just called Sharpshooter or Laser Shot. Hold on, I'm gonna have which it is, right. Which is, which uh, is, he he fights with a gun. So I feel like. If uh, they have that as a move set, what do you think about the possibility of uh, the weapons and accessories replacing your melee and key? So if you have like a, a, a weapon that fires, instead of firing key blasts, you shoot with it. Or if you have a melee weapon, like a sword or a power pole, instead of punching, you attack with that. Because kind of like when you look at Trunks in the previous Dragon Ball Z games, is Future Trunks has a sword. And basically, instead of punching or kicking, he uses a sword. Yeah, I've got it pulled up here for uh, Jaco the Galactic Patrolman, though. His moves are called Elite Shooting and Elite Beam. And to me, I mean, you know, that sounds more like a super move, but is every single individual shot he's going to be going to be a uh, laser shot or I think I think it might vary depending on who you are but let's look at all the uh, all the accessories that you have like as a whole like just to choose from aside from power pole there's a few different swords we have Trunks' sword we have the Z sword Deborah has a sword so there's a lot of swords in there 17 had a gun he kind of used in future Trunks' alternate timeline um, and then of course Jaco here but I don't right. know I don't know what else you would be able to have out, outside of those that would necessarily be accessories that we saw in the Dragon Ball Z uh, universe that we would be able to use with our custom characters. I guess we'll find out once we get the game uh, early 2015. But what do you guys think? Would you guys want to be able to do that? Being able to equip uh, whether it's uh, ranged weapons for your characters or like uh, short range like swords and stuff and power poles. Would you like? Would you guys like that for your characters? Personally, I would because as soon as if I guess they have a sword, I'm so using a sword for my awesome super sandwich that I'll be playing as when the game comes out. See, I would still prefer that a lot of people choose the bare knuckle fisticus as the way to go, because that's what a lot of people in, I mean, you know, actual Dragon Ball Z universe did. There were a few uniques who learned how to master certain arts, such as sword or power pole or what have you. But I, I hope they stick with the, uh, with the classic fist for the most part. But speaking of new characters, we talked about Jaco the Galactic Patrolman. For those of you who don't know, that's a uh, Kira Toriyama's alternate, not alternate, it's a Kira Toriyama's comedy manga that he's been writing, but Jaco and some of his moves were discovered in the actual game code when Sergio hacked the game, that's why we brought him up. But along with him, we've got a bunch of other characters that came out here, uh, at least their moves. They aren't confirmed, their moves aren't confirmed, although they were found in the game code. Again, not confirming anything. We have characters <laughs> like, uh, we have characters like Hercule showing up, of course, Kid Goku with the power pole, a Super Saiyan God Goku move. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, so I mean again GT that's been had, that's been news for a little while now. But the thing that also, struck me oh, go Also ahead. I was gonna say just just to point out, uh, they also had Beerus' attack as well. There's a bunch of like God of Destruction Rage, God of Destruction Wrath as well, so 
what does that mean, basically? So we, we also have Battle of Gods content Would that they... was discovered in the codes as well. Yeah, how, how can Battle of Gods and GT coexist? But any, I don't know, it's it's weird. And also, we got Whis in Battle, or Whis. We got Whis in Battle of Z. Would we get Whis in, because he never actually fought, really? I don't know, I don't know. It's it's fishy. But the characters whose stuff he discovered that stuck out to me the most had to be uh, the potential return of the mighty Ozaru. Yes, yes. Uh, what was it called? The Great A Beam? Yeah, he, got, he found three attacks in there that could possibly, probably belong to the Mighty Ozaro. The Grade 8 Beam, which I'm assuming is the one that he shoots out of his mouth. Almost all of them did that. Boulder Toss and Boulder Break. And uh, if that's a transformation, who would play with that? Which one of you guys would sacrifice... Uh, which, by the way, we're going we're gonna to cover transformations in a couple seconds. Well, not a couple seconds, in a couple of minutes. Uh, who would sacrifice an ultimate slot to have a Ozaro Grade 8 transformation for your character? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, because it's like, I'm. you're not... And like I said, we've got to break down transformations here pretty quick. But you're not giving up... Well, bottom line, you're giving up Super Saiyan. You're giving up the possibility of being a Super Saiyan. But you get to be this giant great ape who can smash the stuff, crap out of stuff. I know I would do it at least a few times to try it and see how fun it was. I don't know if I would. this is something I would stick with, though, as far as... We'll have to see. We'll have to see if it comes out in the game. Again, not confirmed. We're speculating off of stuff. Sergio please, found. please don't go making videos and making blog posts and tweeting that Ramstown Thundershot confirmed the stuff. We didn't confirm it. This is just <laughs> purely speculation theory for fun, based off of stuff that was discovered in the beta. So, which by the way, the beta is still like 10% of the game. For all we know, all these attacks were kind of tested out, and they're probably failed attacks that won't make the final game because they wouldn't make sense because they're either overpowered or they just don't work out with your characters. This is this is the whole point of this whole speculation video. There we go. But we but, have been talking a lot about speculation, about uh, stuff that could possibly be in the game. Let's let's focus on the actual gameplay for a second. So uh, another thing that we've got going that we want to talk about today was how exactly, questions we get all the time between the two of us, I know, how exactly do transformations work? How between Kaioken and Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2 and 3, uh, how all is that going to fit into the game gameplay-wise exactly? So I think uh, based on the data coming out of how the game works, or, how, or the, the data came out of the hack, somebody uh, basically broke down how transformations work. And when you transform, each transformation is tied to an ultimate slot. So to those who don't know, when you create your character, you can either have four super attacks or you can have two ultimate attacks. For super attacks, it includes stuff like Kaioken, Key Charge, and stuff like that. But for more advanced transformations like Super Saiyan or transforming with your Frieza character or I don't even know what Majin's gonna do, but essentially the higher level transformation stuff is gonna actually be inside your ultimate slot. So either you can uh, dedicate your two ultimate slots to like Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, or you can do like Super Saiyan 2 and then like Super Duper Mega Spirit Bomb or whatever. Like essentially you have to figure out what are you going to give up for that ultimate slot. Yeah, and the thing that struck me was is that you only want you only have two ultimate slots to choose from, and you're only gonna be able to use one of them for a transformation because the benefit of having an ultimate is what happens is that your key meter's full when you go like let's just say Super Saiyan 3. You go Super Saiyan 3, your key meter's full, what's well, gonna drain? And it's gonna drain at a rate depending on which Super Saiyan level you are, how strong you are. But the trade-off is that you get to use as many ultimates as you want. So using two transformation forms, like having Super Saiyan 1 in one slot and then Super Saiyan 2 in the other, wouldn't benefit you at all because you wouldn't be able to spam ultimates uh, given that you have none. So it's going to be weird. One question that comes to my mind is if I run Kaioken, let's just say Kaioken times 20 and Super Saiyan, can I go Super Saiyan and then Kaioken times 20? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I feel like probably, they'll probably be grayed out, but that'll be kind of... That's something they should have in the beta. I would really want to love to test it out because I'm sure if, they, if Super Saiyan was in the beta, that would have been like a bug that he'd been tested on. But, uh, but to those who don't know how transformation also work, let me just quickly break it down. When you transform, uh, it uses up your, it's basically like an ultimate attack. So when you transform, your key drains, but you can't charge it. And for a set amount of time, like uh, Thundershot said, you, you will stay in this transformed state. While you're in a transformed state, if you do super attacks or, or ultimate attacks, it actually does not bring down your key. Essentially, your key is locked at, at a draining stage, so the second it's like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, however long it is, is uh, hits zero, you transform back. So essentially, you gotta actually make sure that when you do transform, that you get the job done, because you know, you get this power boost, you get the advantage, so use it right, which actually I really like about this game this time. Yeah, I really and you, love that. It makes it, mean, eh, it makes it so you have to make a decision. Do you want to be like Super Saiyan 1, so that way you transform? Maybe you can be Super Saiyan, and again, these numbers are theoretical, but maybe you can be Super Saiyan 1 for like a whole minute or a minute and a half. Now your power up, your power up boost isn't as good as if you were a Super Saiyan 2 or 3, but you get the power up boost for a longer duration, or do you want to do 
like a Super Saiyan 3, where maybe you can only be Super Saiyan 3 for like 15 to 30 seconds, but your moves do an insane amount of damage during that time. You're gonna have to make a choice there, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see what a lot of people pick. Which is actually funny, because we're gonna go back to Goku and Toriyama from a couple months ago. Remember Goku, at, well Toriyama specifically, Toriyama essentially said that Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 3 was dead, and Goku, for whatever else happens after Between Battle Gods and future movies and stuff, Goku is only going to use Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God. So it's like, because Super Saiyan, is he mastered it to the point where it's like he transforms, he gets a power boost, and it's kind of like the lesser, it's like the medium, where it's like he's not going to go past the transformations because it will just drain him faster, and he'll he'll stick to Super Saiyan 1 where, you know, he gets that boost of strength still. So it's like, what, how are you going to play essentially? Yeah, and the game kind of helps make that theory make sense. I like the way that that ties in. But then it brings up the question, we're looking at Super Saiyans right now. What is a Namekian going to do? Is a Frieza, because I've never seen a Frieza character at all uh, de-transform. Um, so how are you, like if you're playing as Frieza and you go up to 100% full power, are you going to revert back to first form Frieza when you run out of key? Um, Majin characters, I don't even know what to think. Like, could you be a fat boo and then be a tall skinny boo and then be a short skinny boo and then when you run out of key, do you revert, do you revert back to the fat guy? Like, I don't know how exactly all that's going to play out. I guess these are the exact same questions that Dimps is talking about right now. And they're probably panicking because, like, <laughs> they announced this release to be coming out uh, early 2015 and they probably have no clue what they're going to do with all this stuff yet. I would kind of like to see maybe uh, maybe don't give like Namekians or Boo characters per, like temporary transformations in game. Like maybe give them Kaioken if they want to learn that technique. But as far as a full blown transformation goes, I think it would be more accurate if as your character progressed when he hit a certain level, like let's just say you hit level 10 or 25 or something, you almost like in Pokemon, you would evolve like from Fat Boo. We'll just use Fat Boo as an example if you created your character as Fat Boo. From Fat Boo to Super Boo, you kind of evolve Ooh. and you yeah, take be, a huge scoop cool. up. That'd be really cool. You know something else I was gonna say is is since transformations like transforming to Super Boo or transforming to Freezer's form is more on the more permanent end where it doesn't uh, revert back when your key runs out. Something that I would personally do is is if you transform in the middle of battle into like Final Form Frieza or Super Boo, uh, instead of lasting for a certain amount of time, you get the power up but you don't get all the advantages. So for example, if you transform in Frieza, you don't get to use unlimited supers and ultimates while you transform. You just get that power boost for the rest of the battle. And the same thing, similar with Namekians, if you go Super Namekian, and then Boo as well. I, I would do that. But then again, it's like, would that make the Super Saiyan class more overpowered? Or would that make the transformation more powered than Super Saiyan? How is the game going to balance overall? I guess also, that's what we have to figure out. Also, real quick, the one class we're forgetting about, the one class I think a lot of people might forget about, Earthling is in this. But the thing is, is that they're using a lot of stuff from Dragon Ball Online. And I know in Dragon Ball Online, the way that so many people can be Saiyans is the Saiyan gene had gotten so diluted among a bunch of the regular folk Earthlings that everyone, or a lot of people could be Saiyans, some of which are straight Earthlings. But why would you pick an Earthling as a character when Saiyan's an option? What benefits are they going to give the Earthling? Because aside from having a tail, Saiyans and Earthlings are going to be the exact same thing, except Saiyans can go Super Saiyan and be really badass. Ooh, that's a good question. I, I don't even, I don't even sleep tonight now. Damn it, Thundershot! <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, gosh. I guess as soon as we find that out, we'll both definitely release update videos on that. That's wow. Okay, and real quick before we wrap <laughs> it up today, I guess my question of the day to all you guys, I know we've asked you guys a lot of questions and they give us a lot of answers, but my real question of the day to you guys is going to be, um, the difference between transformations now and transformations past games is, in the actual like DBZ anime and stuff, when they go Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2, maybe not Super Saiyan 3 so much, but they stay that until the fight's over. They can be that for the whole fight. They are making it less like the show by meaning that you can only be in this transformation for so long till your key runs out. But I think that's the trade-off for making it a better fighting game. I think that's going to involve a lot more strategy and which transformation you choose and all that stuff. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think it's a good idea for them to make it less like the show in exchange for a better fighting experience? Or would you rather have it be, I want to be a Super Saiyan 2 the entire fight or whatever you want to go off of? That's my question to you guys today. You know what, since people are going to ask us, we should both answer that too. To which, to me, I really like the fact that they're moving to this level where if you transform, you better use it to your advantage. So I like the whole fighting factor because something about uh, ba the, uh, Bowsy, wow. Something about the universe that's awesome is the fact that it's becoming a true fighting game. There's a lot of elements that they're introducing with this game, including stuff like parry. Uh, you guys remember in, in Street Fighter Third Strike, Evil Moment 37, where uh, Daigo Rex, uh, Rex uh, Chun-Li with parries? You can parry in this game. If you hit L1 right when you get hit, I don't know what the limitations are with it, but if you hit L1, which is the guard button, right when you hit, you can actually parry attack so you kind of defend yourself. And the fact that they add so many fighting elements to this game is, is they're bringing back true strategy. So I love the fact that 
Super Saiyan is basically gonna be like, ah oh, crap, I'm about to get my ass kicked, but I'm about to go Super Saiyan, so I have that chance to come back with an awesome victory. So that excites me the most. Uh, what, what do you think about that? I really, really, really like that we are finally getting a good fighting, fighting game. I mean, you know, Raging Blast 2 was there, but it was, I mean, you know, the button masher-esque that it was. Battle of Z was Battle of Z. Ultimate Tenkaichi was Rock, Paper, Scissors. But I really like that we're finally getting what feels like a fighting, fighting game. As far as the yes. transformation goes, as much as I want it to be like a show, like the actual show, it was kind of unsatisfying how in Raging West 2, when you transformed, nothing changed. You could set yes. up your customs so that way things changed. But now, even though it's limited, even though they limit you to a short amount of time, when you transform into a Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, 3, whatever, pe the pe person that you're fighting is going to be like, oh crap, he's a Super Saiyan, I need to watch out. And that's the feeling I've always been going for when I transform, and we're finally going to get that. So it'll depend on how they use it, if it works or not, but I have high hopes for this. I think it's a good move so far. You know what, I would also point out, when I was playing the beta this past weekend, anytime I fought anybody who was Kaioken, I actually did panic, which is something that I really liked. like. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this also, anytime anybody who's Kaioken against me, they wreck the hell out of me. So like... I love the fact, like I said, I love the fact that they're bringing that back into the game, introducing a new way to fight and like really focusing on strategy this time around. So I'm really excited about that. Sounds good to me. All right, so we've asked you guys a lot of questions today. Feel free to answer that in the comment section down below. Also, leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video. Um, our channel descriptions are going to be in each other's descriptions. We're both uploading this video, so that's how that works. But yeah, if you're on my channel, link down below. Take you to RhymeStyle. Go check him out. If you're on RhymeStyle's channel, my link's down below. Do you have anything you want to say before we go today? Yeah, make sure if you're not subscribed to Thundershot, pretend that the subscribe, bu subscribe button is free. So I'm punching it in the face. Subscribe to this channel. Bitch, slap it awesome. over and over again. And of course, <laughs> Rhyme Style has even more information up on this hack if you guys want to know more about it and some of the revealed stuff up on his channel. So be sure to check him out again down below. Anyways, that's going to do it for us today. I am Thundershot, and I was here with Rhyme Style. And we will see you guys later. Peace. Peace.